So let's move on. Let's discuss uh, Joe Biden, who is facing a very serious leadership crisis. The pressure on him to step down is increasing every day, not just from um, major figures in the Democratic Party, but also George Clooney, who uh, is one of his major donors or at least organizes a lot of his fundraising, has has, uh, said it's time to go, Joe. Um, Obviously, this steps from his absolutely dreadful performance um, at the debate a few weeks ago, where basically what was obvious to everyone that he's a little bit doddery, that maybe he's a little bit past it, became suddenly undeniable. People had tried to, his sort of fluffers in the media had tried to pretend there was no issue, just a right-wing talking point. Now it's there. We can't, you know, we can't hide from it anymore. I think it's a lot of Americans. I think a new poll suggests about two-thirds of them now think that Biden should drop out. Mm. I think a lot of them are justifiably extremely angry thinking about how this could have possibly happened, that you get this late in a in, in an election race and effectively forced to change candidates. We're recording this on the day that Biden is due to give a press conference, much touted press conference uh, at, at NATO. And this is, this is being talked about as a big test of his cognitive abilities. Mm. But when you are seriously talking about a presidential candidate on the basis, well, can he make it through this press conference? Yeah, not can he do well, but can he actually not, just consider yeah. Can he survive? <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, it's, it, obviously most Americans think this is a disastrous situation to be in. The question is what happens next? Because I think this is historically would be up close to unprecedented mm. for uh, a new candidate to step in. It looks like we will end up with, we could end up with Kamala Harris yeah. sworn in as president. And, and I think largely that reflects the fact that they raised money for Harris and Biden so yeah. they can use that money uh, for, for a Harris ticket. Um, but obviously Harris has performed very, very poorly when yeah. it comes to the American public and polling, etc. And so I think most Democrats are terrified. I think most uh, Americans are confused, angry. Um, and we will potentially over the next couple of weeks see a historical American moment where someone that uh, they're forced very late in the day um, to make very dramatic changes. Yeah, definitely. And and it's interesting with the, you know, Harris being the alternative, the vice president, it's as if the Democratic elite foisted two dud candidates yeah. on, on the public, not just one, because sometimes, to be quite frank, she can sound as incoherent as old Joe sometimes. Oh, absolutely. It's like superficially coherent, but actually yeah. doesn't make any... It's like a kind of malfunctioning talking Hallmark card, mm. you know, it's like, oh, she works making those kind of motivational posters for offices. Yeah, it's really, you really exist strange. In the context of your of your being, you know that kind of thing. You sound like you just fell out of a coconut tree. Uh, be unbound by what was bound, or I, I can't even be unbound by what was before. I can't oh, remember. Yeah, there's, there's, that's whatever line that is. It's a favourite of hers. That was probably whatever we said was probably more coherent, <laughs> <laughs> or at least strikingly similar. Yeah, um, I mean that was always the strange thing about the Harris pick um, was because of the fact that she barreled out of the primary last time around pretty early on mm-hmm. um not least because she really struggled amongst african-american voters um where biden was really strong it actually saved his first primary campaign was the yeah. south carolina primary um where he was endorsed very heavily by um leading black democrats there and so on um so and then they kind of put her on the ticket almost as like oh this is to show the diversity of the coalition whatever it'll be good for black voters they were already much more in favor of joe biden than they ever were in favor of her yeah. so it's just a sign that that kind of that i whenever a center-left party and certainly the democrats start talk harping on about this identity stuff they're probably talking about a candidate who is shit yeah. i mean you had that with hillary clinton that mm. was the, her only play this w- this woman who was incredibly disliked amongst the country seen as crooked in all kinds of different ways so you just have to go with the the gender issue wouldn't it yeah. be brilliant to smash the glass ceiling similarly Kamala harris there's nothing there apart from this kind of you know, slightly deranged motivational speaker. And so they've, that's, but that's who they've kind of lumbered themselves with, if mm. you like. And it, again, it, it staggers me just on the level of kind of sheer foresight and competence that they would have done that because it was even going into the last election. I mean, Joe Biden is a, is, you know, if you look back at clips from 2020, he's an incredibly coherent in comparison yeah. to now. But even then, he was saying loads of strange things. You know, he forgot Obama's name at one event. He, called a student who was having a go at him a lying dog faced pony soldier you know he's saying really strange things on the debate stage and so there was a sense he might not make it to a second term who's his VP yeah. going to be they'll probably fill the shoe and they picked Kamala Harris but the, the capacity for kind of quite self-destructive decisions because it looks good on a you know on an advert mm. is really core to the Democrats these days it seems like I think yeah I think a lot of for a lot of people also it's not just exposed to the Democrats but also the, the media the liberal media in particular have just it's essentially lied on Joe Biden's yeah. behalf. So mm. it's just acted like 
crafter. I mean, it's been extraordinary. I mean, they're now, in the past few weeks, they are starting to do some holding him to account. But what were they doing before? Mm. Well, n- not much. I mean, I think, that there, as I said, there would be justified uh, confusion and anger on behalf of uh, Americans. It's worth mentioning also that Trump is now in a position where his legal woes look to be largely resolved. He's coming yeah. off the back of his Supreme Court victory, which effectively gave him partial immunity for uh, a lot of the offence that he was charged with. And he's now going to be able to use that narrative when going into the uh, subsequent campaign. So he's riding high and strong. And I think he probably, you know, there was the leaked video of him talking on a golf buggy about the prospect of uh, entering into a contest against Kamala Harris. And he looks to be relishing it. Mm. Because I think uh, she will be... Um, for, for all the reasons you suggest, she shares some of the competency issues that Biden has. I think Trump is proving a lot more comp, uh, uh, a lot more popular among ethnic minority voters and improving his position in that regard. So I think he's game for the fight, um, and I think he'll enjoy fighting Harris rather than Biden. Definitely. And Tom, anything you want to add? No, I just think just on the media point because it's been a bit of a theme with the <laughs> with the Starmer conversation as well. Um, the cravenness really, really yeah. is worth underlining, not just the obscuring what was obviously clear to everyone else um and then kind of feigning surprise when the world saw in that debate and it was impossible to cover it up anymore um but also things like this story it's a, it's a small story but i think it's kind of indicative of a broader trend where there was this radio station in philadelphia mm. where the radio host had admitted that she'd basically just asked biden the questions that had been given to her by the white house yeah. she eventually had to step down all the rest of it but at the same time i thought that was telling because even though that was the most egregious version of client journalism that we might have seen is it a million miles away from the new york times pretending or any of these outlets essentially just kind of pretending or certainly downplaying what was playing out before americans eyes these past couple of years yeah and it's been fascinating i mean it's also blunted one of their key attack lines which is that trump is an existential threat to democracy and thinking if you don't get rid of biden who you know is a no hoper do you really believe that (laughs) this threat exists if you're prepared to you know, take that enormous risk of putting a no hope candidate up against it. So, be interesting. To see what happens. Mm.